Hello and welcome to this video on elephant flow detection in release 7.1 of the Cisco Secure Firewall. I'm Alex Tadashev, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. The new feature that is the subject of this video is called elephant flow detection. An elephant flow is a large, long-running flow that is processed through the Secure Firewall. Now, inspecting an elephant flow may have little or no security value and it could consume valuable detection resources, which could be better utilized in inspecting other traffic. Now, the purpose of elephant flow detection is to assist you in identifying these flows. You can then use that information to decide whether you want to continue to inspect the traffic or tune your rules and policy to pass this traffic without full deep flow inspection. Now, there are some important things to remember when it comes to elephant flow detection. One of those is that only flows which qualify for deep packet inspection are flagged. That means flows that get inspected by SNORT. These are rules with the allow or interactive block action in the access control policy. Encrypted flows are ignored unless there's SSL decryption because the way the system works is once a flow is determined to be encrypted, we stop inspecting it with SNORT. So it's not considered an elephant flow at that point. So what I'm going to start off with here, the screen you're looking at is the unified events view. Now this is kind of a newish view, so I want to run through this a little bit and show you how I use this, maybe give, give you some tips on how to use this particular event view. Uh, but I'm going to use it to find those elephant flows that have been detected on the system. And then I'm going to go into the command line and show you how to configure that in this release of the software. So what we're looking at here again, unified events. These are um, all the events kind of in one place, connection, intrusion, security intelligence, uh, file and malware, all in one place. The thing about this though, you can be a lot of events. So right now, as you can see, uh, I've got uh, shows 10,000 events here out of, in, out of tens of thousands. So it's a lot of events. And if you've looked at a connection event table before, you know that they just, you know, there's just a lot of events there. Trying to find what you're looking for can be a bit of a challenge. So let's start off with what we're going to look at when we when we open this view. So on the right up here, you can see I have uh, the time window. Right now, I've set that to the last three hours. So that time window defaults to a fixed time range. Now, I like a sliding time range myself. So the first thing I do when I come to, to this event view is I change this to a sliding time range, which I've done already, and pick a time window. I think it defaults to an hour. I went with three hours this time. But a sliding time range now gives you, uh, lets you know that the most recent event is going to be up to date as of the last time you refreshed the screen. Now you can do a live view as well, which is a really cool feature of this, and you can watch those events come in real time. In my case right now, and for the most part, I don't really like the, 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 the view scrolling on its own as events show up, so I like to have a view that I control the scrolling on, but that's, that's something you might want to look at as well. If you're looking for a specific event to come in and you've done some filtering here, that go live is really handy. So once you've got the, the sliding time range, refresh here will uh, refresh that, of course, updating the, the newest event to the current time. Now the columns in this view, um, there's a certain set of columns that are set when you pull into this view. Now this one, I think I've modified it a little bit, but what I want to show you is how to modify those columns and how easy it is. Uh, because the column I want to see actually here is called reason. And right now I've got you know time, action, event types, and other things about the event but there's no field in there that will be populated in the case of, say, an elephant flow. I mean, it's a connection event is what it's going to be, but you know, it's, it's got a reason of elephant flow in it. Without the reason column right now in this view, it's pretty hard to, to find that. So to add a column, you go over here to the left, there's a little columns icon, and you click this. And what you'll see is the, the default um, columns are going to be selected at the top or whatever you have selected at the time. Like I said, these aren't exactly the default ones, but um, the selected columns are going to be at the top and the remaining columns available are going to be shown below in alphabetical order. So you're starting at A and you know, through whatever. So if you know the name of the column, it's pretty easy to scroll down and find it. The other thing I want to mention here is you can see next to each one of these uh, columns, there are little icons. And that tells you the event types that this particular column applies to. So this has a number of different event types, intrusion, file and malware, uh, connection events, etc. You notice this one here, the AMP cloud only uh, applies to the malware events. Uh, same as you know these three. So you can tell when you add a column what types of events you can expect to see information in that column for. So I want to add the reason field, like I said. So I'm going to go down to R. So here's the reason. So when I check reason and apply, it's going to add that column in. 
Now what it's going to do though, is it's going to add that column in clear on the right side. So if I go over the far, the far right, you can see there's the reason column, and that's cool. But I really want it on the left. I kind of like it right next to the action column. So pretty easy, just click that, drag it over, put it right next to the action column, drop it. Now I got action reason. It actually freezes a number of columns here too. So I can actually move columns in and out of this frozen area. So if I scroll to the right, it's, it's kind of frozen those first three columns so I can maintain that context as I scroll across the rest of the, the columns there. So uh, now this is all fine and good, great, but but again, I still have a lot of events and you know not very many with a reason in them. You know, so far, none. I think I'll find if I go down far enough, but it's like, oh, there's one. Okay, finally, there's IP block. But okay, this sounds like a hassle to scroll all the way down trying to find you know an elephant flow or other types of events. So one of the things you can do with this view is uh, the three dots next to each one of those fields allows you to include or exclude that based on that value. So for instance, if you want to include only connection events or exclude connection events from this view altogether, you can do that. We can also do that for blank columns. So here's a blank column reason, right? So if I want to say exclude that, that means I want to see events where this column isn't blank. So, you know, will this work? Actually, it'll work. Once I click that, you can see up here it has this reason, bang and A. So this is going to exclude events with no reason populated. So click apply, let's see what that does. Now this is actually a really cool search. I just found this the other day and I was like, this is really handy because now this shows me the events that I really care about, right? Things with a blank reason are things that are like, well, IP blocks that have a reason actually. Uh, the blank reasons, I mean, they're mostly just connection events that are just connections, right? But here's a bunch of IP, security intelligence IP blocks, really cool. If we go on down, I've got some uh, security intelligence. I've got some connection events that are elephant flows here. So this is what I'm looking for. So this is the new event I want to just mention that is in 7.1 and is just elephant flow. Now these are turned on by default. You don't have to do anything to turn these on. Uh, there's a certain threshold I'll show you in a second that is set. And if, if the, uh, the flow of the connection matches that threshold, you'll get an elephant flow event. You don't have to have connection events enabled for the flow either. So you don't have to go and turn on connection events and get you know a million connections a minute on your FMC just to get elephant flow events. You should get those anyway. So any flow that matches an elephant flow criteria should generate this connection event even if you don't have connection logging enabled for that flow. So uh, again, if we look at the flows, uh, so if we look at some of these um, elephant flows, I can scroll over to the right because I've got those um, initiated responder bytes columns uh, selected here. So here's a first one's about but a, a megabyte of um, from the initiator. This is actually a log connection. You can see it's uh, the UDP. It's actually going to a syslog port. I'm using 1514 for a syslog port here. Uh, and going on down, you can see these are good size flows, a megabyte or more, really. So that's, uh, you can probably guess, that's kind of what my threshold is set to. That is not the default threshold, by the way. I just did that so I could demonstrate this um, in this uh, video. But that's, a, that's an elephant flow event. And now you can go in here, you can find these, you can look at them and you can say, eh, you know, here's one that's you know, pretty large. And again, these are small as far as elephant flows. A lot of them are, are multiple, multiple megabytes or gigabytes in, in a flow. So these are not exactly real world examples. Yours will be much bigger. So when you find a really large flow that you know, lasted an hour or something like that, you might say, hmm, that's a large flow. Do I really need to be running that through my snort inspection and make that decision? It helps you identify those. Uh, that's a quick and dirty on how to find an alpha flow. You'll see those in, in connection events as well. So it's not just in Unified here. I'm just using this view because it's a new view and I want to show you how it works. But connection event view has the same thing. You can uh, do a search for elephant flows. In fact, connection events view has a predefined search for elephant flows built in. So let's talk about how to, to uh, adjust that. So I'm going to pop out to my device CLI. So this is a handy dandy uh, command line interface. I've SSH'd to a device, uh, uh, this test device on this network. So there are a couple commands here that uh, you're going to want to know uh, if you want to tweak this. And you probably will want to tweak it if you want to use it. Um, the threshold that we ship this with uh, you know, may or may not suit your needs. So the commands you want to know here is a couple of them. One of them is the system support um, elephant flow detection. So uh, now that's not going to do anything. It's going to actually say it needs something. So if I click a question mark after that, I type question mark, it'll give you the possible options there. If you can disable it, you can enable it. Um, you can set the time threshold or the bytes threshold. Now there's another setting that will tell you what the current connection or the current configuration is. 
and that is show show elephant flow detection config if I do that's going to tell me what the setting is set at and this is the default the defaults are uh, 1024 megabytes or gigabyte uh, and 10 seconds so it doesn't mean a gigabyte in 10 seconds it means that the flow has to be a gigabyte and has to be 10 seconds or more so it has to be 10 seconds or more in, in duration and a gigabyte or more in size so anything that exceeds that it has to exceed both of those parameters then uh, then it'll be identified as an elephant flow now you can change that fairly easily by using that uh, system support command again so again system support elephant flow detection and then you can change either the bytes or the time or both so I can if I say I want to change both of them and I'm gonna set it down to my real minimum for my testing and again I don't recommend this in product production you're gonna get a lot of events but um, you know, to set it down as low as you can go I, I did something like time threshold one so that's one second and bytes threshold it's about bytes one so that's gonna set it to one megabyte that's in megabytes by the way it says that you know right there next to the the parameter so that's going to then set that um, to a very very low as low as you can go actually so if I do that show again now and see yes it is set to one megabyte in one second so there's nothing else you have to do you don't have to restart snort or anything like else if you want to do the show elephant flow status there's another command elephant flow status it'll tell you whether it's enabled it should be it is by default unless you've disabled it, it's going to be enabled now i've changed the configuration or changed the threshold so now when i want to go back any flow over a megabyte in one second will be identified as, a, as an elephant flow and you can see from you know behind there that that's what I've done here and that's why these have been identified they may barely may barely inch over a megabyte they they show up as elephant flows and as I mentioned already look for some upcoming features to enhance this things like pulling the CLI configuration back to the UI uh, doing some things to also check to see if the snort CPU if the CPUs on the box are under duress because again right now it's just identifying the flow size you know if it's a large flow that runs a long time and maybe it's not even a very high volume flow it's not causing store any issues it may not even be a candidate for um, you know bypass but the new features we're going to introduce are going to um, provide that additional context to say hey this is actually causing some duress you might want to look at it for right now that's a quick introduction to elephant flows and I hope that was helpful and as always happy snorting